cocaine trial. Today, the punishment phase continues. Eric Hernandez joins us live to talk about the latest developments. A chase that led Comal County deputies into San Antonio over the weekend ended with bullets flying. And this noon, we have new details about the suspect involved. Live from KSAT at 12, the news at noon starts right now. It was a rainy morning for a lot of folks in our community. There were some who had to actually deal with the heavy stuff. And that led to some flash flood warnings in several counties. Meteorologist Justin Horn here to tell us what we should look for right now. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, we had some heavier rain earlier this morning. Flash flooding, the threat, at least here in San Antonio, surrounding areas really has pretty much gone away. You can see most of the rain has gone away. We still do have some lingering warnings. Uh, for just a little while longer, but I, I, again, I think the threat is gone. We are going to turn our attention, though, uh, to some heavier rain out west, places like Uvalde, uh, just east of Del Rio, this little complex here. It's been sitting there for a while. It's likely going to drop some heavy rain, so there could be some flooding within this. There are flood advisories posted. No flash flood warnings yet, but it's possible uh, some of those roads could go underwater uh, out to the west of San Antonio. So what do we have in our future? Well, uh, we're watching maybe some redevelopment potentially this afternoon. If these clouds can clear out, we're seeing a couple of showers and storms there south of Rock Springs, and uh, we could get a little more activity later today. If we do, we'll have to watch for the threat of flooding. Everything's moving pretty slow here. Temperatures have been kept down, obviously, thanks to the clouds and the rain. 75 at the airport, 73 Randolph, 74 down at Divine. And the forecast for today, rain chances low next couple of hours, at least here in town. We'll ramp them back up just a little bit late this afternoon and this evening. A few more chances next couple of days, too. We'll talk more about that forecast in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. It is week four of the Otis McCain trial, and this morning the punishment phase resumed with more cell phone data for the jurors to consider. Contents from McCain's cell phone was presented to the jury by the prosecution. Erica Hernandez is joining us live from the Bear County Courthouse with the latest. Erica. Hey guys, so if you remember last week, that cell phone content from Otis McCain's phone caused a continuance, which was brought on by the defense because they wanted more time to look over that evidence that was supposed to be presented by the state. Now, the first thing this morning, the defense had several objections about that content would be presented to the jury. Judge Ron Rahel overruled all the objections, which allows this evidence to be shown to the jury. Detective Justin Knox took the stand to detail photos, text messages, emails, and web searches extracted from McCain's phone. I went through all the photos uh, of the phone and I looked, found anything that was what we call a selfie, a picture of, of the person taking a picture of himself, any uh, driver's licenses or any pieces of paper with their name on it uh, to identify and say that that is their phone. Now, according to the state, this evidence is highly relevant to show McCain's intent motive and planning. Now, Detective Knox is still on the stand right now presenting that evidence. That report will have more on his testimony later this afternoon. Reporting live from the Canada Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, Case at 12 News. Thank you, Erica. Meantime, hundreds of people are fighting the coronavirus inside area hospitals this noon, and we are set to get updated figures tomorrow on that. But across the country, the U.S. marking six straight weeks of COVID-19 cases rising. The White House says vaccinations have been steadily increasing since July 5th. But as ABC's Rena Roy reports, officials worry that's not fast enough. A familiar sight now popping up in COVID hotspots once again. Long lines of people waiting to get tested in Orlando. As the U.S. reports more than 100,000 new cases in a single day for the first time since February. Things are going to get worse. We have 100 million people in this country who are eligible to be vaccinated who are not getting vaccinated. Daryl Baker, a healthy 31-year-old who refused to get vaccinated, fighting for his life in a Missouri ICU with just a 20% chance of surviving. His wife and six-year-old son praying he'll beat the odds. I was strongly against getting the vaccine just because we're a strong conservative family, but that little boy out there is 
Have 47 states and territories now considered areas with high or substantial community transmission. Florida reporting more than 21,000 COVID cases on Friday, its largest single day increase since the pandemic began. And in Texas, there are now just seven available ICU beds in Austin, a city with 2.3 million residents. In Louisiana, hospitalizations are up nearly 500 percent in the last month, the state reporting the highest in infection rate in the country. If this is happening here, especially in New Orleans with pretty good vaccination rates, it's going to happen everywhere. Booster shots are being considered, but for now, federal health officials say they're not necessary. Pfizer, Moderna, J&J &J do have high effectiveness against Delta. There is no reason to rush forward at this present time uh, for a booster decision. The CDC says the Delta variant is more contagious than the common cold and as contagious as chicken pox, explaining that one person sick with the original strain of COVID-19 could easily infect an average of two to three people in close contact. But with the Delta variant, that number could now be up to nine people. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And while the fate of some events is uncertain as COVID-19 cases rise, today it was announced that San Antonio's Dia de los Muertos Festival is returning to Hemisphere this fall. The festival was on hiatus last year due to the pandemic. However, this year it's back with in-person events. It'll be on October 23rd and 24th. You can read more about the event right now on KSAT.com. New at noon, we're learning more about a suspect who was shot by a deputy. This after the Comal County Sheriff's Office says that person led authorities on a chase into San Antonio and then tried to run him over. Deputies say they tried to pull over 32-year-old Nicholas Ryan Norton for a traffic violation on Saturday. And that's when the Sheriff's Office says Ryan sped off, making it all the way to a via bus terminal here in San Antonio. In the process, deputies say the suspect almost hit one of them. As the chase came to an end, deputies accused Ryan of trying to ram his vehicle into their marked vehicles. And that's when two deputies from the Comal County Sheriff's Department and one Comal County constable began firing towards Ryan. He was hit twice, taken to the hospital. He should be okay. Ryan was charged with two counts of aggravated assault on a peace officer. A man has died after he was hit by two drivers on the west side early this morning. Police say around 430, the man was crossing Castorville Road near Southwest 26th Street. We're told the victim wasn't using a crosswalk and didn't yield to traffic. A driver in a Fiat hit the man, pulled over to call for help, and that's when a second driver in a Mazda also hit the victim. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Some scary moments this morning for a couple on the east side. A bullet shattering a window in their home, narrowly missing them. Police say that that bullet flew into the home on the east side near St. Phillips College around 6 in the morning. The bullet ended up lodged in a television. The woman and her husband were in bed at the time. She says when they heard that shot, her husband grabbed her and they hit the floor. Police think the bullet came from a distance away. No one was hurt. Also near this noon, police still searching for a driver who ran off after hitting three construction workers at a construction site. Also included in that hit were two trucks on I-35 early this morning. This happening on 35 near North New Braunfels, that exit right there, causing the interstate to shut down for several hours. Sarah Costa shows us the SUV that hit the workers and what police now know about the driver. I-35 just east of downtown back open and calm after being shut down from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m., after a SUV struck a construction crew working on the interstate this morning. Here's what we know. San Antonio traffic investigators tell us a SUV was traveling on I-35 near North New Braunfels just after one this morning. The driver of a silver Chevy HHR drove through a grass median to try to avoid road closure vehicles. That's when police say the driver struck one of the road construction workers, but it didn't stop there. A police report says the driver hit two more workers, then struck two Textot trucks carrying street barrels and closure signs. The driver didn't stop to help the workers. Police say he got out of his SUV and ran off. The two workers are both males in their 20s. They were taken to Bamsi in critical condition. The third worker is a 22-year-old woman. She was transferred to a hospital downtown for a broken leg. Police continue to search for that driver. They didn't release a description, just that it is a male. Now, police on scene did say that that SUV is registered out of Dallas. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. The Cowboys could get, continue to get ready to kick off the preseason and still no Dak leading the way. 
An invasive species threatening our local ecosystem. How you can help curb the effects of this, the apple snail. A destructive invasive species has been spotted along the San Antonio River. Apple snails are back, which pose a threat to aquatic plants and native species of our river. Now, crews and volunteers of the San Antonio River Authority have been working to remove all of those apple snails as well as any egg cases. Alicia Barrera spoke with the Environmental Science Division of Sarah and has more on what you can look for if you spot any apple snails. Good afternoon. Well, these apple snails, what they do is take away food and habitat to the native species in the San Antonio River. And the problem is that they work quickly. The focus now is to remove the egg cases as one single egg case can hold thousands of these snails. So what do you need to look out for? The dark colored apple snails are the size of a fist. They can be spotted along the banks of the river. And if you look closely, you may also see a bubblegum pink material. Those are the egg cases. So the big question, how do they even get here? Experts believe someone may have dumped their aquarium into the river back in 2019 and the ones we're seeing now stem from that uneducated action. According to the San Antonio River Authority, the non-native species was first spotted in October of 2019 along the museum reach section of the river. It's the same case this year round, except they're multiplying even faster. It was about 3,600 egg cases last year. We're already up to over 7,600 egg cases this year with the adults three or four times more than they were in 2020. So it's, it's pretty bad and it's just consistently getting worse from over the last couple of years. If they start going downstream away from the channelized areas of the river walk and into the natural parts of the river, they can eat the vegetation on the banks and they can cut back that vegetation so much that we can start having erosion along the banks. Along the river, you'll see signage with pictures of what to look out for during your next trip to the river. Be on the lookout, but don't pick them up. You can report them directly at 866-345-7272 or online with as much detail as possible. But more than anything, the San Antonio River Authority says that they need volunteers in order to help monitor, collect, and dispose of these apple snails. On KSAT.com, we have all the information listed in order to become a volunteer. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Alicia standing out in the rain there. Those things are nasty. That they was are. The, that, was, that was just some nasty looking stuff right there. <laughs> I know, but if you're an apple snail lover, you have to you know, uh, love them too. Let's hear from I don't love this much rain when you're having flash flood warnings though on a Monday morning. Well, it, it, we had a few. I, thankfully, Ursula, the, the flooding wasn't all that bad. Most of this was just good soaking rain. We'll take that. And you look at the temperature, we're at 75 on August 2nd. That's not bad either. Aquifer technically down a little bit, three tenths of a foot to 665.6. I would imagine this number is going to start to come up. Some of this rain soaks in. And looking at the pollen count, as you might have imagined, molds jumped up into the very high category, 16,250. We'll look at the radar when we come back. So last night kind of reminded you of one of those spring storms. A lot of thunder, a lot of lightning, noise, yeah. my, rain. My little puppy dog slept right next to me all night. He was so scared of the thunder and lightning. Oh, oh well, it was loud. It was. It was. Uh, and we had some. And it was all night. It was. It, you know, these storms lasted through the nighttime hours. We were around this morning, made the morning commute a little bit messy. And we picked up some good rainfall totals in spots. I want to show you some of the observed rainfall. We're still adding to some of this, by the way, especially down to the south and west. Uh, but Spring Branch, this shows about five inches, although we did get some reports north of that, close to six, even seven inches of rain. Seguin, three to four inches. Fair Oaks Ranch from last night's rain and this morning's over five inches. Vanderpool, 3.42. Kerrville, about three tenths of an inch, so a little lower as you get up uh, into the hill country. Uh, but even out towards Brackettville, 1.37. And that rain that uh, they saw earlier shifting now to the uh, south. At the airport, technically 35 hundredths of an inch, not as much, but Stinson did pick up around two inches. So these are great numbers, and there was a little bit of flooding this morning uh, as uh, this frontal boundary is sort of pulled up stationary, and we'll still see the potential for a few more showers and storms a little bit later today. The atmosph atmosphere is kind of worked over at the moment, but if we do get some sun back out, uh, that may destabilize things just a little bit. I'll show you the uh, satellite picture here, and there is quite a bit of cloud cover. I don't know that we'll see that much sun today, but 
there is some blue sky trying to peek through, especially as you get up into the hill country, maybe even northern parts of Bear County. Uh, there's some of that rain out west and then uh, some dying showers there around the Austin area. Let's jump into the radar actually and we'll get a little better view of what is happening here up and down I-35. This is just like to moderate rain. Any of the uh, rain that was over Bear County has gone away. Our flash flood warning has now gone away. So we're left with just this heavy batch of rain out near uh, Uvalde and Eagle Pass. And boy, it's been consistent. I mean, it hasn't died down much. We're losing some of the lightning strikes, which means it's weakening just a little bit. But this is going to continue to put down some pretty good rain. And you know what? I'll switch over the radar sites here. We'll get a little better look at it uh, from better vantage point. You know what? We're looking at it from a closer radar site. And notice it doesn't look as bad. That's because it's not shooting as high up into the uh, area of rain. So this is more just light rain. It looks worse when you're using the radar out of New Braunfels. Uh, but Uvalde, Crystal City, Eagle Pass up to Brackenville, still a little bit of light rain there. Looks like a little bit of a swirl, so maybe a little bit of a area of low pressure may have developed. And that'll stick around, so there'll probably be some new development maybe off to the east. And uh, we'll watch what happens along that boundary as well. The radar still can be active even as we go into the afternoon. Here's what the forecast looks like. And this computer model does show some new development around 6 o'clock north of San Antonio. Some of that trying to work south. And then I think as we get into tomorrow, the focus may be south of San Antonio, depending on where that boundary sets up. Outside right now, you can see some blue sky there off in the distance. Not much, but it's there. Temperature 75, still reporting some light rain at the airport, although for the most part it has ended here in town. 73 Boulevardi, 75 Bernie State, 75 Hondo, 74 in Divine. These are great, great temperatures for early August. Now where there is more sun, look at these numbers. It is 91 in Victoria, 89 in Kennedy. So those clouds and rain make all the difference. Forecast for today, we'll put in a 40% chance of rain this afternoon after a brief break in the action. Northwesterly winds 5 to 15. And we'll go 30% chance of rain tomorrow and Wednesday, generally south of town, and then a 30% chance Thursday after that. Though summer's back, comes back with a vengeance. We'll be looking at mid to upper 90s likely by the weekend, guys. Thank you, Justin. The Cowboys have to adjust their offensive line again, and the Texans still dealing with quarterback issues. Coming up. Camping with KZ, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys training camp continues. We are getting to see a glimpse into the future. The best play from training camp so far, delivered by C.D. Lamb and Trayvon Diggs right there. Those two coming up impressive rookie seasons. The top two players on offense and defense going head-to-head -head for that jump ball in the end zone. Garrett Gilbert is the guy who threw it. Right now, he's the backup quarterback, which means he's the starting quarterback because Dak Prescott is out. And you can check out Trayvon trying to tear that ball away from CD. Uh, now this is also the first season for Tyler Biadzic to start at center after being forced to share time last season with Joe Looney as a rookie following the forced retirement of Tra Tra Travis Frederick. So has Travis reached out to him? He reached out to me um, um, prior to the draft and then after the draft too. Um, he's, a, he's a great guy. I mean, I got to meet him and... Um, um, we uh, we talked on the phone a couple of times, just like you know about like recovery or about just doing like position work or whatever. But um, and I gave gave great tips and everything like that perspective. And then you know I'm also like working my way into the role of uh, being on his uh, board for his um, hunger foundation. Um, so I'm definitely in, in a pretty close contact with him. Terrence Steele also thrown into fire in the offensive line after Lael Collins and Tyrone Smith went down. The Steele High School graduate who went undrafted wound up as a starter as a result of injuries in just his first season in the NFL. So how is he different as the San Antonio High School product gets ready to start his sophomore season? Football and mental standpoint, just, I just have a lot more experience. Um, I got to play, I got to start 14 games last year, played in all 16. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm more, like, the game's slowing down mentally, and then physically, uh, I shed about 10, 15 pounds since last season, and I've uh, been working on my core, been working on my lower body, my legs, and uh, my feet. Your feet are a big part of everything, so, yeah, I've been working on that. All right, now to the quarterback position. Prescott sidelined since Wednesday after feeling something he's never felt before in his throwing shoulder. He had to shut himself down early and had an MRI. It revealed a muscle strain in his throwing arm. 
since that time. Dak has been on the field, just not allowed to throw the ball and will be reevaluated today to see when he can start throwing again. After all, he's been through taking nine months to rehab from the worst injury of his football career, only to have this happen, even though no one is in, including Dak seems to be too worried about it. Just a little, a little shoulder pain, a little shoulder soreness, I should say, and tightness. I uh, didn't obviously want to um, push through something that could potentially make it worse. So I mean, it's just frustrating just leaving the field. Anytime you have to leave the field uh, because of anything, uh, not being out there with your teammates, not getting better, but it's not necessarily a concern I'm worried about or a concern that I think is going to uh, continue throughout camp or anything. All right, so the players get the day off today. Tomorrow they practice from 1 to 3, and then Wednesday they head over to Canton, Ohio, for the big Hall of Fame game that kicks off against the Steelers at 7 o'clock Thursday night. And then Friday after the big game, they'll have a day off. The Houston Texans also in the middle of their training camp. Yesterday, Mark, the first day the Texans team had a day off since starting camp on Wednesday. All eyes went on Deshaun Watson, who showed up to camp to avoid a $50,000 a day fine. But while the Texans coaches and GM refused to say where they are possibly trading Watson or if they plan to trade him or play him this year. Something that has been overlooked is what quarterback Tyra Taylor said last Friday. Listen to his response when asked if he thinks the Texans are his team to lead. I definitely feel that guys look for me for leadership. Um, and of course, obviously that comes with the quarterback position and I welcome that role. Um, it also comes with experience in the NFL um, guys naturally gravitate to older guys and want to learn and pick their brains. And um, that's what we need. I mean, and it's not just me on this field. Of course, um, I'm a natural leader, um, but we also have other natural leaders on this team as well, too, and a lot of veterans who have been other places, even guys that have been here who have a ton of knowledge of the game. And um, it's up to the young guys to, to, to ask those questions, but it's also a responsibility of the older guys and the veterans uh, to share that knowledge because it all brings us up. And um, ultimately, we want to be a better team. And the more information, the more, the more we can share with those guys, um, the better off we are as a team. And that answer may shed some light on Deshaun's future. Here's a look at their camp schedule Tuesday. Tomorrow, they practice an open session today. They actually practice at 9 a.m., so that practice is over. And then there's tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, all morning practices. Too hot to practice in the afternoon. Even for those NFL guys. Oh, yeah, they not heat. No, they indoors. Hydrate. Uh -huh. A federal eviction moratorium expired over the weekend. Now some people are in danger of being forced to leave their homes. But residents in Texas still have some options for temporary relief. We have details on that in the next half hour. And Justin Horn is tracking rain potential. A look at the forecast coming up after the break. Kids are heading back to school. That means it's time to shop for supplies. And these days, school supplies go beyond paper and pens, right? From laptops to tablets, August can be one of the best times to buy these things. Coming up today at 5, 12 on your size, Marilyn Moore. Let's take a look at what other deals you might want to score as the summer comes to an end. Let's get outside with live cam. Just took a peek outside the door. Mm -hmm. Opened up a little bit. It's almost, I don't, do I dare say cool outside? It's humid, but. You I know, mean, this is like the summer that wasn't. It's, it's been weird, right? Yeah. The, the whole year has been weird all the way around. But uh, yes, yeah, rain early August, great way to start the month. We did have a little bit of flooding earlier, but for the most part, this is just good, healthy rain at this hour. We're still watching a complex out here between Uvalde and Eagle Pass. Really trying to fall apart here, but there are still some pockets of heavier rain just to the west of Crystal City there between Eagle Pass and Crystal City. And then as you get up towards Yu Valley, it's just light to moderate rain. Here in town, not seeing much. Uh, we had a couple showers earlier, obviously, but uh, things have really quieted down. I'll switch radar sites here so we can get a little closer look here. What's going on here in San Antonio? But yeah, pretty quiet. I do think as we get into the afternoon, there could be some development across the hill country. Some of that could sink south. We still do have a frontal boundary out there, but in the meantime, uh, sort of a lull in the action, if you will. There's a look at the satellite picture, and these clouds are making all the difference. You get down towards Victoria and Beeville, temperatures are much, much warmer because they've been seeing sun most of the day. We're going to be under these clouds for a while longer, so we've brought down high temperatures today, mid-80s at best. 73 Boulevardy, 80 right now in New Braunfels, 75 in Seguin, 77 Stinson. And the forecast, yeah, we'll leave some rain chances in there as we get later into today. Temperatures up around 86 for a high. Northwesterly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. We'll look down the line. There are some more chances, but this may have been our best shot. We'll explain that and uh, take a look at the seven-day forecast here in just a little bit, guys.
Thank you, Justin. At least 88 large wildfires are burning in the western states. In Oregon alone, 35 small and large fires were ignited over the weekend due to lightning. The McFarland wildfire in Wildwood, California, spread over 2,100 acres. It's only 5% contained. People in the area were told to evacuate. But crews battling the Dixie Fire did make progress over the weekend. That fire, 248,000 acres, it's now 33% contained. Still, some evacuation orders continue. A warning issued for Southern Oregon where dry lightning could start more fires. A heat advisory and excessive heat watch has been issued from Oregon all the way down to California and Arizona as temperatures are forecast to surpass 100 degrees again. There's also been life threatening flash flooding from New Mexico to Montana. That includes this scene in Colorado. Officials say mudslides caused extreme damage to a major interstate there, leaving it clogged with boulders and rocks. There's no word on when it might reopen. Meantime, Interstate 70 in Glenwood Canyon, Colorado, was hit by flash flooding. Lanes in both directions covered with large debris, such as logs and boulders. And that floated down from a wildfire area back in 2020. Chinese authorities have announced a large jump in the death toll from recent floods. The government says 302 people died and 50 are still missing. Record rainfall inundated central China on July 20th, turning streets into rushing rivers and flooding the subway system. People were trapped in subway cars as the waters rose. 14 people died in the subway flooding. A group of bipartisan senators on the Hill unveiling the legislative text for the long debated infrastructure package. That bill aims to rebuild America's roads, mass transit systems and expand broadband internet. The new piece of legislation could be voted on as early as the end of this week. ABC's Ike Jochi is in Washington with more. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says congratulations are in order. We haven't done a large bipartisan bill of this nature in a long time. After two long days of weekend sessions, a bipartisan group of Senate negotiators finalized an agreement for an infrastructure bill. The new price tag, $1.1 trillion with $550 billion in new spending, $110 billion earmarked for roads and bridges, $39 billion for public transit, and $65 billion to expand and broadband internet. Senators introduced the bill late Sunday with what appears to be a newfound appreciation for bipartisanship. We will continue to once again demonstrate to our country and to the world that we can indeed do our jobs, that we can legislate, that we can work together. No new taxes, core infrastructure only, and it's great for the American people. The full Senate will now begin working through amendments to the bill. The original group of Senate negotiators will be tasked with making sure 10 Republicans stay on board, a task West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin believes will be completed. And you think it will pass? I do. Oh, absolutely. I do. And you see Chuck Schumer and, and you see Mitch McConnell both voting for the same thing. It's unbelievable. The bill, however, will face more scrutiny once it gets to the House. Speaker Nancy Pelosi has already said she won't take up the infrastructure bill unless the Senate passes a budget reconciliation bill that includes President Biden's human infrastructure proposal that will likely cost around $3.5 trillion. President Biden noted that if the human infrastructure bill passes in the Senate, concessions and compromise will likely happen in the House. Ike Giacci, ABC News, Washington. And some lawmakers are calling on the Biden administration to immediately extend the nation's eviction moratorium. This comes after it expired over the weekend. An estimated 3.6 million Americans are at risk of eviction, some as soon as today. Congress was unable to pass legislation swiftly to extend the ban, which expired at midnight Saturday. Here in Texas, there is some help for those facing eviction. Under the Texas Eviction Diversion Program, Eviction proceedings can be delayed up to 60 days if both the tenant and the landlord agree to participate. And an eviction can be scrubbed from public records if an application is approved and a landlord receives payment for unpaid rent. The UK welcoming American tourists today. However, US authorities are still advising people not to travel overseas. We'll explain still ahead. And a cruise line is also welcoming travelers. However, it is expanding its coronavirus testing requirements. A look at the new rules coming up.
Zoom agreeing to pay a $85 million settlement in a lawsuit over data privacy and Zoom bombing. You remember when the video conferencing service was hit by hackers and customers were complaining that their private meetings were being interrupted by people shouting profanity or even sharing pornography. In response to the lawsuit, Zoom Video Communication says it's improving its security and improving safeguards for consumer data. Under the settlement, some paid subscribers will be eligible for 15% refunds on their Zoom subscriptions or $25, whichever is larger. Before the proposal is final, a federal judge in San Jose, California will have to approve the deal. You're going to have to get a COVID shot if you want to work for the Walt Disney Company. The company announced that it is requiring vaccines for all salaried and non-union hourly employees working at sites here in the U.S. Employees who aren't vaccinated and working on site will have 60 days to get a shot. Those working from home must provide verification of vaccination before they return to work with limited exceptions. All hires will be required to, fully be, to be fully vaccinated before beginning employment. Royal Caribbean expanding its coronavirus testing requirements in U.S. waters. It now requires passengers over the age of two, including those who are vaccinated, to show a negative test before boarding trips of five nights or longer. It'll be accepting negative antigen and PCR results for that. The new policy, which is the cruise line says is out of an abundance of caution, goes into effect on Saturday and runs through August 31st. That test must be done no more than three days before boarding the ship. Before the change, vaccinated passengers did not have to show a negative test. The new policy comes as the Delta variant proliferates. Overseas, England has now begun to allow fully vaccinated travelers from other parts of the Europe and the United States to enter the country. As ABC's Julie McFarland explains, there are things you need to be aware of before you book your trip, though. The first passengers from the U.S. arriving in the U.K. overnight. The first time they've been able to move freely into the U.K. since the start of the pandemic. We're very excited. Tremendously excited, <laughs> of course. And we've been waiting for this moment for uh, quite a long time. Britain easing restrictions today on U.S. tourists coming to the U.K., hoping for more visitors for what's left of the summer season. We are very excited to see the American tourists coming back to London. It has been a long time and we missed you guys. Lovely. <laughs> Travellers coming from the US and some other countries will no longer have to quarantine for 10 days on arrival. But you still need to show proof you've been fully vaccinated with a US or European approved shot at least 14 days before arrival. And you still need to pass a COVID test before departure and shortly after arrival in England. Life has come back. It's a boon for the airline and travel industry, and especially for the many small businesses that rely heavily on tourists in summer. It's something that's great for our, our industry. The move comes as Britain seems to be at a turning point. Instead of exponentially soaring, Britain's Delta variant caseload appears to be slowly falling for now. Deaths are barely a fraction of what they were in the second wave. But just because you can come to the UK doesn't necessarily mean that you should, according to the US authorities, who are still advising Americans against travelling to the UK amid concerns over the Delta variant. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. Okay. Outside with Larry, it looked like London in here, doesn't it feel like London? You know, I was just about to say the same thing. It, it has been a very unusual summer for us because we've had so many days when we needed an umbrella. Yeah. Just imagine Buckingham Palace back there behind the airport. Big Ben, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, feels like it. 80 degrees so far today. We're not there right now. We reached that 80 degrees overnight. We're sitting at 75 right now. The low was 72. That was set a couple of hours ago when the rain moved through. Officially at the airport, only 37 hundredths of an inch. But some places saw a lot more than that. Uh, good rainfall, and there could be a little bit more on the way. We'll have another look at the radar coming up. We are watching the rain go away, but will we get some more tonight, Justin? It's possible. It's possible. And I'm going to start here with a video. Uh, this was coming out of Seguin. This is a creek there. Uh, and some of the reports here were up to four inches, maybe a little bit more. And the, uh, Terry sent in this uh, video from Seguin. And she was saying that she hasn't seen the creek this high in a long time. This feeds into the Guadalupe River, by the way. So the, the streams are flowing. The creeks are flowing. We got some good rain in a lot of spots. Up around Spring Branch, there were some estimates of six to seven inches. Those were the, the high end numbers, but four to five inches were 
uh, reported around Fair Oaks Ranch and where we saw some of the heavier pockets, uh, even here around San Antonio, San Antonio, up to two inches were possible. Well, looking at the radar right now, what you'll notice is that we have an area of rain off to the west. That's mostly just light rain there south of Uvalde. Dying area of rain around Austin, but look at this. Starting to get some new development there across the hill country, north of Fredericksburg, around Junction and Rock Springs. We'll see what happens with this. The flow would push most of this south and potentially south and east. So once we get the atmosphere to recharge a little bit, we could see some more action later this afternoon. But I think we're going to see a pretty significant break here for a while just because the atmosphere gets pretty worked over when you see all these showers and storms. Uh, we'll look at some of this activity up here. Uh, it's starting to see some lightning strikes associated with it. Uh, some activity there north of Lakey, just south of Rock Springs. And then I mentioned up there around Junction, seeing some activity as well. As we look further south, this is that area that's sort of been sitting there for a while. But what I'll do is I'll switch radar sites and I'll show you that it's not as bad as it looks because we're looking at a radar that's far away. It's looking way up into this complex of showers. So it looks like it's heavier rain. Really, if you put on the radar that's closer to this, it's generally just light rain. Still some lightning strikes, though, uh, being detected there northwest of Crystal City. And for uh, San Antonio, the rain uh, is pretty much done. Uh, we're not seeing much return on the radar there. Satellite picture shows uh, quite a bit of cloud cover. Good strip of clouds right over San Antonio, stretching down to where we're seeing that rainy valley and Eagle Pass. And that really has kept temperatures down. The rain has helped, obviously, too. Once we get a little bit of sun, and, and most of this activity that I was showing you there across the hill country is forming where there is instability. The sun is out there. Uh, we may get uh, some more activity to bubble up. And we've also seen quite a bit of sun down there from Victoria to Beeville, and it's uh, had a big impact on temperatures. A little bigger picture here. There's a frontal boundary that sort of snakes through Texas. That's giving us the lift. Sort of a rare August setup, but we'll obviously take it at this point. This frontal boundary will eventually wash out, but maybe the focus for more air, uh, showers and storms tomorrow south of San Antonio. And uh, maybe uh, even going into Wednesday, there's a chance uh, we could see some of that. So looking at the forecast, this is around 6 o'clock. It shows some of that activity coming out of the hill country and moving down towards San Antonio. This would be around dinner time, maybe a little bit later. And then shifting south as we get into tonight, I think the focus will be south of San Antonio tomorrow too. There's the scene outside, seeing a little bit of blue sky there in the distance. 75 at the airport, 77 Stinson, 74 Kelly, 73 Randolph. And temperatures are now in the 80s up there around Kerrville and Comfort, where the sun is starting to shine through. 82 also at Lost Maples. Uh, very odd to see Lost Maples warmer than San Antonio, but that is where we stand right now. 81 in Catula, and yes, there are 90s on the map. Victoria Corpus down towards Laredo. Forecast for today, it's going to be sunshine dependent, but I think we'll get some sun. That should push temperatures up into the mid to maybe upper 80s in some cases. Still a 40% chance of rain as we go into this evening. 30% chance to the south tomorrow and Wednesday. Another slight chance on Thursday. And after that, rain chances pretty much go away and it starts to heat up. Mid 90s by the weekend, guys. All right, Justin, thank you. It is almost looking like a normal summer at the movies. Three new films landed in the top five at the weekend box office. So look at the top five films coming up after the break. Disney's Jungle Cruise debuted in the top spot at the box office this weekend. The adventure starring Emily Blunt and Dwayne Johnson easily debuted on the top spot, making over $34.2 million. The Green Knight starring Dev Patel opened in second place, earning $6.78 million. Old fell from first to third on ticket sales of $6.76 million. You like how we can take it all the way out to the decimal point. $6.4 million gave Black Widow fourth place and a domestic total of $167 million, though. Matt Damon and Stillwater debuted in fifth place with $5.1 million. A new streaming series airing right now on Peacock. It looks at the world of Olympic gymnastics. CNN's Rick Damagella talked with Olympian Dominique Dawes for this story. Elite gymnastics will keep you up at night. 
Golden delves into the world of Olympic gymnastics and the women who compete in it. The streaming series features and is produced by four-time Olympic medalist Dominique Dawes. I'm excited to be an executive producer of Golden along with LeBron James, Maverick Carter, and another amazing group and team of people. This is really going to shine the light on the Olympic pursuits for Olympic hopefuls in the sport of gymnastics. I feel like I know my gymnastics better than ever. Everyone's used to seeing the glamorous experiences as Olympic gymnasts on the podium or once they make the Olympic team, but no one's really had access to the raw and very intense footage of how we get there or don't get there. Many of these athletes are not going to make it. They don't see the journey and the road and the level of sacrifice it takes to get there. And as a three-time Olympian who went through this for much of my childhood, um, it really brought back a level of great anxiety, a little level of uh, PTSD uh, watching this because I know what these young girls are going through. It's just a scary feeling when you only have one chance to be perfect. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. SA Live getting ready for their back-to-school special in primetime. That's right. It airs next Tuesday, August 10th from 7 to 8 p.m. right here on KSAT 12. And today they have an encore episode for you packed with summer fun. Hey, Mike and Fiona. Well, happy first Monday in August. Yes, it is already August and new month. We got to talk food. Of course. <laughs> Great restaurant, kind of a, a deli uh, combination. Deli just down home cooking the Hayden and tuna melts are fantastic. But we're going to be making a tuna list. Tuna melt. A tuna less tuna melt? Tuna less tuna, tuna, tuna melt. A lot of alliteration <laughs> with that one, too. <laughs> All right, and Jen is catching up with the cast of Virgin River on their brand new season. I love this show because it is like a warm hug. If you're a Hallmark movie fan, you will love Virgin River. Oh, okay. The Hallmark. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, and talk about a warm hug. How about warm cinnamon rolls? Oh my goodness. Cineholic is here and these buns are exploding with flavor and what is trending in these desserts. They are yummy to say the least. And she's the oldest female judoka in Olympics history. And she's from right here in the San Antonio area. We're going to hear from an Olympian about her journey to the summer games. San Antonio Public Library is here. Some nature crafts. Just a great way to get out and enjoy and uh, great little things to do with the kids. And let's